Thank you for returning to the Anthracite Horror Stories. And I apologize for my voice. I have not been feeling good for the last two weeks. I'm suffering from the effects of that horrible oxygen depriving disease that was unleashed upon the world in 2020. We all know the name, we don't want to mention the name. So I've been hurting pretty bad. I think I've had a relapse and I may be suffering from the long term version of that illness. So we'll see. But I have no energy. I'm just trying to take it easy. So, two weeks ago, someone commented on one of my older videos. It was the 1897 Von Storch coal mine fire in Scranton that claimed the lives of six miners. Six mine workers. Not everybody was a miner per se, but they were underground workers. So that's in a sense coal miners. To be technically speaking. But this gentleman's name was John Boyd. And two weeks ago he said, my great grandfather Miles Boyd was one of the survivors of that fire. He was a driver and the only reason he wasn't there was his mule had thrown a shoe. The following is an article about him immediately after that appeared in a Philadelphia newspaper. So this was pretty cool. I mean, I was like, I mean, it's sad, it's horrible. But I'm like, wow, this is, you know, why I wanted to do this channel. This is a direct descendant who had a relative that unfortunately lived through this event and found my channel and we can connect and share these stories with the world. So in the description on this video, I will link that original video. Please check it out. It's pretty disturbing, pretty sad, a really gruesome death for six miners. And there was one incredible tale as to how a gentleman from Poland survived. It's a total crazy story about this one survivor of this disaster. So again, link is in the description. So here's the 1897 article that John Boyd sent me, the great grandson of one of the survivors of this disaster. Sudden prostration. A miner faints and becomes unconscious. Why? Scranton, Pennsylvania, November 20th. Miles Boyd was on the night shift at the Von Storch mine Monday night. While at work, he fainted. Sucker soon came, and after a time, he was removed in a semi-unconscious state to his home in the third ward. While briefly noting the mystery, I leave the credulous and incredulous to form their own conclusions. Mr. Boyd, 16, is a driver, and he was employed at and near the scene where the victims of the late lamentable disaster gave up their lives. While passing the place, suddenly there appeared before him the ghost of one of his companions of that night. The name of the young visitor from the spirit world is suppressed, but Mr. Boyd is certain that his young friend appeared to him. And you cannot convince him that an impressionable and vivid imagination could form the apparition in his mind's eye. He was in the mind the night of the fire, and he and Eddie Lotus narrowly escaped with their lives, leaving their coats and caps behind. On that fatal night, Boyd's mule lost a shoe, and while he was outside with the mule, the fire occurred. Boyd, who was 16 years of age, was a boon companion of John Moran, both working on the same shift. Moran perished in the disaster. When the mines resumed operations Monday, Boyd disliked very much to go back, but it was thought the mine foreman would be more thoughtful than to put the poor, scared lad to work in the same place where his companion had died. But there was no other place for the boy, and he and his mule went along the lonesome and fatal gangway where his companions met their awful death. It was about 11.30 o'clock p.m., young boy says, when he was near Tully's Gate, the spot where the men gave up their lives that one of the number appeared to him. He saw the vision plainly, with lighted lamp, and in the same clothes that Boyd saw him attired in before the accident. The apparition was at play, as boys often are in the mind. The sight caused young Boyd to faint, and when he laid by the roadside until some water bailers came along, 
it was cruel to send a timid boy back to the scenes where his comrades died. But this is only one instance of the heartlessness that goes with coal mining. And that article is completely spot on. But this is only one instance of the heartlessness that goes with coal mining. Can you imagine having to go back to work? I think it was like the day after this mine had caught fire. Six young people asphyxiated to death. One guy barely made it out. Again, watch the original video. And they tell this 16 year old driver, and what the driver was, he handled the mule. He moved the mule around in the underground workings to get them throughout the gangway network of tunnels and then ultimately either up the slope or onto the shaft landings. And he's alone and he has to work in the section where his friend and his other friends and co-workers asphyxiated to death. And I, I, I can't remember if they might have even been on fire, but it, it, it was vicious. It was a vicious way that these poor young guys died. And just hours later, one of the survivors is told, well, you got to go down here and work. So go take your meal and just go do your normal shift. And when it says that he fainted in the roadway, that means the gangway. So he had fainted when he saw his friend, John Moran, appear to him. And at least John was just being playful. But that's still terrifying. And as you can see, that lamp I got burning there, that I have burning there, I'm sorry, is a teapot oil wick lamp. And that's the same type of lamp that was on John Moran's head when he appeared to Mr. Boyd as an apparition. So it's pretty terrifying. I can't imagine the lifelong stress that this poor gentleman had to deal with, you know, having a career in the mining industry probably for the rest of his life and he's always thinking about that but he saw his friend and he always stuck to that story that he didn't have an imagination his friend really appeared to him and he was so scared in that moment that he passed out so let me know what you think about this story and as always i appreciate the viewership and subscription for my channel it's a very sad story, but kind of cool at the same time. Miners were very superstitious, but a lot of them had bizarre occurrences happen to them in the mines while they were underground. And my, I myself, in these abandoned mines, have had a lot of weird encounters myself. So I'll also link that video in the description. Have a good weekend, and again, thank you.